What's up everybody? Welcome to Magic for Beginners. My name is Keith and today we're going to be breaking down the cross cut force which is sometimes called the crisscross force. We'll be talking about what it is, how and where it can be used, the theory and logic behind it along with showing you some routines where you can use this to super easy force cards on playing cards and use it as a great method when performing magic. When I was researching the origins and history of this particular magic move, I believe it was first published in 1925 and described by Max Holden in a trick called The New Knife and Selected Cards, which appeared in Magical Monthly Volume 2, Number 10. However, on another website, it was also stated that it was number 18 on the Magical Monthly that it appeared in. So if you have any further details on this, please let me know and others in the comments about it. So it's been around for nearly 100 years and is one of the easiest force methods available to a magician, I think. But it does require some time misdirection to work effectively. I think due to this, it puts a lot of magicians off using this move. The basic idea behind a force is that it's a super simple way to force either the top card or the bottom card of the deck, or sometimes you can use the effect to force the both the top and bottom cards depending on the routine that you are performing. When you get into magic and you learn a number of different tricks, techniques, and above all else, knowledge. You sometimes think that the basic things won't fool the spectator when you perform for them, but if you think back to before you knew magic, you got fooled by this technique, this move, and possibly even still get fooled to this day by super simple things which you don't know how they work. I know even though I'm fairly new to magic and know a vast amount of things, I still get fooled things. I still get fooled by things which I have the knowledge of, but it's used in a different way, presentation, or some other way which catches me off guard. These days there's a cliche revolving around pick a card trick and in that most people will have a guess at what will happen, which is usually they pick a card, it'll get lost in the deck, then the magician magically finds it again. Spectators will assume that you've made them pick the card as the deck is in your hand, but the joys of a cross cut force is that the spectator can hold the deck, cut the card and potentially have the choice of picking either the top stack or the bottom stack of cards, which makes a card reveal or trick even more magical. From this effect, the sky is the limit, so on you go with the trick, it can be a prediction effect, something where you can have a card appear at an impossible location, or even just start an ambitious card routine, which is an apparent free choice card selected by the spectator. So let's have a quick chat about the effect and how to perform it, as there's a few different variations and uses on this, and we'll go for the basic version and cover alternatives and adaptations later on through the video. So firstly, you need a deck of cards, and it doesn't even need to be a full deck, it could be done with a much smaller packet, but all you need to do is peek the top card or the bottom card, or even both if needed, and remember that. For this, I've just used the joker on both of them. You need to hand the deck to the spectator, place it on a surface, or you can hold the deck. Then all you have to do is instruct the spectator to cut about half the deck, place that half onto the table or even the card box to keep them from being put on a sticky, wet surface if you're performing in pubs. Once you've done that, you tell them to take the other half of the deck and place that on top. Place it as an angle or diagonally on top of the cards that they've just cut to and that's the complete force. So that's why it's a cross cut because it looks a bit like a cross. Let's break this down further and see what has happened. If you peeked at the top card and wanted to force that one, the top card in the deck is now the top card on the small pile of cards which was put down on the table first. So to force that, you pick that up, the, stop, the, the top stack, get them to select the card, the card on top is the joker. You can of course ask the spectator to make a choice if they want to select a card from the top or bottom and using magician's choice, uh, you can make them pick up that card. So. If they say top, then you remove the top packet and instruct them to take the top stack from the top card from that stack, and that's the top card you started with. If they say bottom, you can say, okay, we're going to use this bottom packet to select a card, take the, the first pack and use the bottom packet. And that's how you force the top peak card of a deck. If you pick the bottom card, the theory behind it is all pretty much the same, apart from the peak card is now on the bottom of the top pile, so which is the, the cross on the top. So that was the one that was placed on the table after. So when you want to force that card, you can do it up by picking the pack on the top, showing the bottom card and tell them to remember that card and like that, that is the joker. Or you can take the uh, the pack and flip it over like that and get them to take that first card, which is the one that you peeked at anyway. And obviously they cut the cards and it's that. And again, you can also make it seem a bit more random and impossible by asking the spectator, do they want to select a card from the top or bottom? 
If they say the top, then you pick up the top packet and tell them that we're going to use this top packet, as you said, and show them the face card from the bottom, which is the bottom fast card. And if they say bottom, then you do the exact same thing. Just pick up that first top bit and say, right, this is the bottom of the pack. So just by using Magician's Choice, you can force either the top peaked or the bottom peaked card, depending on which way it is stacked. If you want to use two specific cards and you picked up both of them at once, then once the cut has been done and completed, your two cards which you need to force are the top of the first dealt down pile, which is this one here, and the bottom of the second one. This can be used to get spectators to get two specific cards which you can use for a prediction or can be used by a routine with one person. Christian Grace has a fantastic trick called Cross Cut Considerations where he uses the Cross Cut Force and gets a spectator to apparently free choice select a number of face cards and they select a suit and then freely choose a card from that suit using either the number of suits and when the spectator has chosen said card the card which appears from the Cross Cut Force is their card. This of course requires two cards to be known to the magician and then used in a fashion to be used as an out as if when needed. I saw this in a lecture with him last year at Newcastle, but I believe it also appears on his Magic Monthly service too. I just want to butt in here and ask if you've enjoyed the video so far and want to see more of these, then please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell to be notified of new videos as it would help, really help, really, really help the community to grow and get recognized by more people. So that's the basics behind the cross cut force and despite it being super easy, people don't click on to what happened and think that the card that they have ended up on, this was one from them cutting the cards and it could have been any card at all. There is a huge debate about this in the magic community and it's the thing of because it doesn't fool you anymore as a magician that it won't fool anyone else. But remember at that one time in the past, as we stated, when you were a lay person, you've been fooled by things like this and it's probably fooled you in the past. From using this crosscut force, you can perform a massive range of different tricks and a wide variety of different predictions. And it can be used any time and with any deck of cards at all, which is absolutely perfect. You can borrow anyone's deck, peek at the bottom card, which is 10 of hearts, and when you take the cards out of the box, like so, you can just sort of take them out and you're good to go and have this card force. All within a matter of seconds, you can have this done. You can even see the bottom card and give the spectator uh, the deck, so they've got it in their hand, write down a prediction, place it on the table, get them to do the cross cut force, like so, and then the, the, the card that you've wrote down is the spectator's card just from the cross. One of the things to stipulate with this crosscut force is that when the spectator has cut the deck, you need some sort of misdirection or something to take away the spectator's sight away from the deck to make them forget where the deck was cut. You can do this just by uh, talking to the spectator and they'll usually make eye contact when being spoke to so that's some misdirection all done and then just give it a little bit of time when you're talking to them just so they can forget about the cutting of the cards. The thing with forcing a card is that you can make predictions as well ahead of time and make things even more baffling. For example, you can write a prediction and give it to the spectator to keep in their pocket at the beginning of a routine. You can perform a couple of tricks and then you can go through with this, select the card you wrote as a prediction, so if I had uh, nine of spades there, I could just cut the cards like so and then I'm ready to go and this is an impossible feat for the, the spectator because they cut the cards, they do that, you get them to force it and that's that card. So for this example, what I find the easiest is when you're looking through the cards, you find the cards you want to force. Again, we'll go for, for Ace of Clubs here. So you just spread along to that card, take all the cards that are below that in the deck, just cut them like so and do that. Once you've done that, you're good to go. You can even give it some shuffles. As long as you maintain that card to the top of the deck, then you're done. Then you can also just sort of look through the cards and you can peek that top card, which is gonna be on the top when you're flicking through. You don't even have to do any cuts. And then once you know that card, you're good to go. This is a highly rejected card move or force used by magicians these days, I think. And I don't see why it should be frowned upon as it's a classic in magic and it does deceive people who you perform this on. Yes, you can have a riffle force, a Hindu force, or anything else at all, but sometimes the basics are basics for a reason, and that they work fine 100% of the time and fool people. This was something a little different to the Magic Trick tutorials, but it still has some tutorial aspects in there as well, along with some history and breaking magic down, which is something that I really enjoy watching and doing. If you want to see more of these videos like this, breaking down some magic moves and things in magic, such as predictions, the double lift, Marlow tills, card controls, mentalism, or whatever else you want broken down, then let me know in the comments. Until next time, see ya.